Welcome back to the Greenhouse Weeders. I'm Beth Myers Shanai with the Oregon Department of Agriculture's Noxious Weed Control Program. And uh, we're gonna move to a wetland plant today on our noxious weed list. This is yellow flag iris. And it actually is kind of a laughably small yellow flag iris. I managed to have grown a dwarf variety, it seems, here in the greenhouse. I guarantee you it wasn't a dwarf when you first brought it in. Um, this one definitely needs to be divided, and I was going to do that and kind of grow it bigger, but then it sent out this beautiful flower, and I decided it was time to give it a time to shine and show off its bloom to you, and we can talk about it a little bit. Yellow flag iris is listed as a B on our Oregon State Noxious Weed list. Um, that's one of our, the, we, we have A's and B's, so uh, B is still an important um, stay on top of it, need to get it under control if possible, noxious weed. Um, but we don't spend as much time or um, money funding projects with this one as we do some of our higher priority A's or targeted B weeds. Um, but there is a lot of work being done on this because it is primarily an invader of wetlands, uh, the margins of, of rivers and streams and lakes, um, and can change the, um, the ecology of those habitats quite a bit by capturing a lot more sediment than normally would be there. So um, as an iris, this is a category of iris called a bog iris. So not every yellow iris you'd see out there is going to be yellow flag iris. Uh, flag irises grow in wet conditions and so if you see one that's growing pretty much in fully submerged or very moist spongy conditions and it has a yellow flower then it's likely to be this yellow flag iris. Um, it's got a very um, kind of diminutive sized um, flower compared to large bearded irises for example. This is more like a Siberian iris type flower um, and I'll Pull this up so you can see maybe a little bit more detail of, of how that flower looks in the middle. And uh, being an iris, it's got these long linear leaves that get much wider and much, much taller than this. So I would say a yellow flag iris could easily be two and a half, three feet tall when it's um, fully grown. Um, and when it's done flowering, it can form um, a capsule here right below where the flower um, dies off that then um, fills with little disc-like seed. And so this plant can grow, uh, as, as you can see in this one, it's been growing and, and sprouting new growth all around the original plant. So it can fill in in one spot pretty quickly with all that vegetative growth. But the seeds in these pods, um, once they mature, the pod breaks apart and those just float wonderfully down the river, over to the so other parts of the pond or lake and, and start whole new infestations, which is why it's been so successful of a wetland invader. We really, we don't have biological control agents for it. Um, there aren't a lot of natural controls for it, which is why it versus other native wetland plants, um, it can outcompete them so well. Um, it just doesn't have anything that's um, feeding or preying on it very much. So if you know you've got infestations with this, we can um, give you some advice on helping to get it under control if it's on your property, or um, if you're out looking for it, um, it's this very distinctive yellow iris that's growing in wetland conditions and, and uh, you know you've found it if you weren't sure. So um, stay on top of this one. We wanna keep our wetlands healthy, productive. We all depend on them for um, clean water and um, a, a good healthy ecosystem in our watershed. So let's stop the yellow flag iris whenever we can. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.